thank you for uh, listening to Integrate Your uh, Self podcast with Allison and Amaya. Um, we are here today with a uh, wonderful guest. Her name is Panya Walker. Panya Walker helps entrepreneurs and professionals who are partnered in parent and parents to experience a greater level of health, fulfillment, and productivity. Her um, her ability to deal to help with people uh, in their discoveries of what they were wanting and how they want to live their lives it comes from a decade long of journey as a teacher, a trainer, uh, writer and editor, as well as a corporate communications professional in Asia and in the Americas. Currently she is online and she does virtual work online with uh, people one-on-one -on -one. and she has a um, four-month co uh, coaching program that she um, helps people get to the crux of the story, get into there and find out what they really, really want to do with themselves, building powerful teams and partnerships, clarity, and uh, helping people re remove procrastination. Especially she does a wonderful job with people helping them cultivate their pa patience and presence. Um, her uh, website is panyawalker.com and she is a lifestyle uh, advisor, certified empowerment coach, and a certified medium. So we welcome to the show, Panya Walker. How are you? Thanks, Maya. I'm great. Really happy to be here with two people that I follow myself and really admire. Thank you for oh, having me. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you for being a part of our show. We really yeah, thanks uh, for coming on. Yeah, really, really enjoy um, seeing you and uh, hearing all the good things that you're providing for your clients and people that are online waiting to hear about your uh, information. You want to give them a little story about who you are, a little bit of how you got here, and uh, what's on your mind. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Let's get into storytelling, right? Right. We want to hear about you. Thank you for that awesome introduction. I, I am a um, holistic lifestyle and wellness advisor. I'm a self-empowerment coach. I'm a, I'm a medium, a certified medium. And really, um, as I see it, what I help people to do is kind of step up and step out in their lives, mind, body, and spirit. So they can really take the leap from where they are to where they want to be, right? So I see myself as helping them to recreate themselves so that they show up as their best selves and as their whole selves. We can probably all relate to this idea of showing up as our full selves in their health, their relationships, their businesses. And then to do this consistently, right? Because we're in it for the long haul. This is about um, consistency. This is about sustainability. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I'm really excited about working with women. I think I'm just at this place in my life, you know, I have two small children, I have a business, I have a spouse. And so, you know, as a woman, women, we're so multifaceted. So I'm really excited about working with women because we really are powerful um, drivers of change in our families and in our yes. community and in the world. And we really have the potential in these really turbulent times to recreate the world as we know it. These are really turbulent times, and I think we can be at the forefront of bringing us back as a community to center, helping us to build or rebuild from a place of truth, uh, peace, integrity, love, all these really wonderful qualities. So it excites me to work with women. And I have to tell you, I saw Wonder Woman for the first time yesterday. I think how serendipitous that I saw it right before the <laughs> I just saw it, right? And you know that scene where all the women are on horseback and it's so powerful, right? I see myself as being a part of that. Oh, wow. That thing, right? And when you watch the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It's about helping women to, um, so, helping women to give themselves permission to know themselves as empowered yeah. in all of their facets, right? In all of their dimensions and all of their beauty. Because we are so multifaceted. We're mothers, we're wives, we're career women, we're healers, coaches, teachers, trainers, you know? And, and I think that the only way, the, I shouldn't say the only, but the truest way as I've known it, as I've seen it, to empower ourselves for busy, multifaceted people, the clearest, the shortest, the easiest way is to really take good care of the self, to know the self, to speak up for the self. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Maya and I talk a lot about that. And uh, we, 
you know, my fascination is like how we as women can keep our energy and not get depleted while we continue to take on more, right? <laughs> what is your advice uh, on that, Panya? What do you tell, how do you help women or anybody, I guess, not deplete themselves? Or, or what advice do you give them to uh, continue to take on more without actually running yourself into the ground? Well, I think where I start, where I start is this idea of recreation. Like I, I start with women first with understanding some things about the self, right? So right. when we take on something new and I'm going to call it recreate ourselves, it always comes with some challenges, some fear, some doubt, overwhelm, all kinds of triggers that can either kind of keep us where we were or where we are or propel us forward. So I think I've kind of become sort of a master. You know, I'm still learning at recreating myself. There are a lot of things that I do, but that's something that I've done over and over again in my, in my life, you know, always adding something new, right? And nice. every time I do it, no matter what, there's some level of fear, worry, sometimes anxiety uh, every single time. So long story short, uh, stepping into the unknown Stepping into new learning and new spaces is, is always scary. So the first thing I do is, is acknowledge that. Mm, right. That's great. Yeah. Right? Because the alternative yeah. is paralysis or shutting ourselves down sure. or stifling ourselves. So um, and that, if I, you know, I want to find that place of peace and it starts with acknowledging, okay, the unknown is scary. Okay. I'm not going to let the, 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 those negative, negative Nancy thoughts kind of stop me from moving forward. Right. Yeah. And that, fear, That's the first thing. and that fear is always going to be there. It's a matter of how you look at it and how much that fear either can swallow you up or you can actually look at it in different ways and say, okay, so this is a new way of looking at this. Okay, let me see how I can adapt with this. Because I think most times, uh, as I've seen, is like there's an illusion that there isn't supposed to be a fear once you conquered something, but then, you know, it's like, wait, no, 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 no. There's always <laughs> going to be this. You have to go yeah. past this too, you know? So, and, and I don't know if you agree with me on that, but that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all know fear, uh, but at the end of the day, as, as I see it, fear, fear is just an indication that we need more information, yes. right? Oh, so, I like that. Yeah. The, the information gathering process, that's part of our learning. And as we integrate our learning, uh, we sort of, we mature and we set ourselves free. You know, as we learn and experience new things, we find it's easier to move forward than we thought. And we're like, okay, what's next? Yeah. Okay. I'm a yeah. Got it. Now like, let me gather. I mastered that. Now let's, what, what... <laughs> and I absolutely, and I think yeah. that curiosity brings us into that courage aspect, right? Yeah. So the curiosity is what leads us there. Like, you know. <laughs> And if we follow that curiosity, then we're more able to uh, to actually get the, I guess, uh, create the courage or and to deal with the fear, right? That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I and then, you know, gather more information and then find someone who's done what, what we're looking to do. Uh, you know, we, we thrive when we work in community with each other. We do. We thrive when we know that there are people who care, who are rooting for us, and who are kind of calling us on our ish, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? totally. So, it helps us to learn and grow. So for me, I always, I, I, I first, I say, okay, this is normal, natural. I, I'm not going to fight or, or resist a very natural thing, which, which fear is. I'm just going to allow it to have a propulsive nature rather than a paralyzing nature. And then I'm going to go seek community. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. I like that. It kind of brings it in perspective, right? It's uh, uh, another way of um, saying, you know, um, there's always something I can do. And there's always an, a choice, whereas fear, if you believe it, makes you not want, think you don't have a choice and you always have a choice. It may not be something you, you prefer, but when you look at certain things, it's not because you were supposed to prefer, it was supposed to be something that needed to be done for your growth. And so, yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. I, I think another way that I think of it sometimes, it, it's all these emotions, they're just emotions and feelings yeah. that come up that can be triggers like fear fear is a precursor i just need more information and that's going to propel me sometimes i get pissed off because i'm like really fear again <laughs> really again with this i thought i was beyond this right have you have you experienced that <laughs> yeah oh, oh yeah yeah awesome <laughs> yeah yes. 
<laughs> yeah, and, it, and I, I think it's one of your visions and mission is um, you, you know, my life is to learn to love and live free. So you want to tell a little bit about what that is for you and how you came up with that for yourself and why you're teaching that to others? Oh, wow, that's great. Thank you. Um, loving and living free. To me, you know, when I was thinking about this podcast, right, I sat down and, and I actually was thinking about what does this mean, loving and living free, that I haven't said before. <laughs> you know, and I thought about uh, some stepping stones to this place. And I actually thought about something. First of all, I'm here because I need it, right? I teach about loving and living free because I, I you know, I've always had an adventurous spirit, a desire to be free. You know, I'm not... Um, in, you know, the typical kind of adventure sports and spelunking and stuff. I'm just kind of a person who has always wanted to live life on my own terms, mm. right? And I haven't really owned that until now, this point in my life. And again, as I was thinking about the podcast, I was thinking one thing that popped up for me was a memory from my childhood. <laughs> and it was of... Um, how do I put this into words? It was kind of, it was mystery. It comes up as mystery. I've always been really intrigued by mystery, adventure, but I would be on more the mystery side. And I remember yeah. I came across these notes that I used to write with one of my oldest childhood friends. When we were maybe 11, 12, we actually created this alphabet. <laughs> we created, we recreated the alphabet so that we could write letters to each other that our parents couldn't read, our teachers, you know, <laughs> half of the note five. Nobody could break this. Code, Secret right? letters, yeah, That's, right. Journals, I would write in this cold, or I would write backwards or upside down. I mean, literally, I'm looking at my old journals. I'm like, geez, Louise, what was going on? But even early on, when I I didn't have kind of the agency to go out and explore on my own, mm -hmm. I was creating these things for myself. These um, these mystery, these kind of adventurous, creative outlets for yeah. myself. And so, you know, as when I was young, my strongest subjects were math and science and language. And I think in retrospect, I put a lot of effort into those because there was always something new to decrypt, to figure out. And as I got older, I got into the liberal arts and history. And I, I, I majored in history in college because it opened the world up to me and it allowed me to travel through time and location. And it enabled me to study abroad in Africa. And after school, I went to Japan and then Hong Kong and, you know, a decade of just wonderful travel. And, you know, when I first took the leap, folks in my family, they were like, uh, you going where to do what? You know, <laughs> dangerous. So you don't know the language. You don't know anyone there. And I was just like, you know, I grew up in New York City in the 80s and 90s. And those were pretty <laughs> times, right? Do, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you knew how to survive yes. more than most people. I swear. That's a good I, place to learn when you're young. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, it had its, pros, it's had its pros and its cons. But I learned to be aware of my surroundings. And to protect myself in some ways. And really the point is language can be learned. Friends can be made. That's the joy of recreation. It's about stretching yourself um, and, and, and growing yourself. And to me, that's freedom. I think freedom is something different to every person. But to me, it is allowing myself to step into the unknown courageously, right? And so now when I share a new adventure or an endeavor with my family or my friends, they're like, oh, well, that's Ponya. There she goes again. And, and I would hope that some have even be, been inspired to change some things up in their own lives, you know, grow beyond their known world, mm, right? Yeah. So I think recreation would probably be the constant for myself. It's mm. what I have achieved some mastery in, and it's what I'm, I'm trying to help other people to master. You know, I, I've recreated my career. I started as a teacher. Then I was a writer and an editor. Then I did... Uh, philanthropy, corporate philanthropy, and that was all wonderful experiences. They were fulfilling until I found that I wasn't growing in the way that I wanted to. And, you know, the space to grow is important in the corporate world, after, you know, after I learned what I needed to learn became too confining for me. I, it was, and, you know, literally I was given the boot. I was mm. given the boot prior to go this kind of wellness path. And to me, um, that was a real blessing because it allowed me to step into an unknown space and learn some new tools. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because the point is that we learn a lot of things coming up that kind of teach us to struggle and suffer through it. And really, 
I'm trying to take the struggle out of it, right? That's self-empowerment, that's living free. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to be moving to a new state or a new country. You don't have to travel halfway across the world. I mean, unless you want to, <laughs> right? And I think right. it's good to work in a, um, an environment that you're not working for someone, you're working with someone, you know, so that, that brings that entrepreneurial space and that creativity even more out. And if you have your surroundings that help you um, live that, you kind of feel that even freedom in that kind of realm, even though you're in certain things you have to do, you're always kind of showing the respect and, and saying, you know, hey, how can we collaborate? What can we do to even improve what we're doing now? And, you know, all that. That's right. I mean, we have to be, we don't have to, but it helps to be able to grow. Yeah. We want to be agile. We want to be able to pivot while still maintaining our sense of self and strength. We want to learn what we need to learn so that we can step into each new experience with confidence and surrounded by loving and supportive people and, and in glowing good health. And so, you know, for me, the process. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Let it out. Let it out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Better out than in. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I have two three-year-olds. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Energy. For me, getting free was about really unpacking some core belief systems that I had. Yeah. And maybe many of us share um, that were part of my worldview for so many years. Of course, I started with myself. And I, I growing up, did you ever hear that saying, if there's no struggle, there's no progress? Yes. Many times. Yeah. Many do times. You, do you feel like that's true, though, in, in a way, or for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a great question. Because um, <laughs> I've thought because, about that a lot lately, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and in these times when we're thinking about taking a stand and standing up for each other and standing up for what we believe is right, I think, uh, I think it depends on where we are in our progression, right? So if there's no struggle, there's no progress. I learned that as a Frederick Douglass quote, and he was a, a great hero for my father. And, and my father was a sculptor, and he had you know, a beautiful sculpture of Frederick Douglass in our house. So I always had this wow. concept in my mind. And my family grew up in the civil rights movement, and we're very active in that movement. And so I think that serves um, at a certain point in your progression because it helps you to see that uh, struggle is a part of the process of growth and that progress can come from struggle. So it helps you to get through trauma. Uh, you know, a sense of victimization. It can help you to see yourself as a phoenix rising from the ashes, that there's something on the other side of this struggle too, right? So I think there are lots yes. of layers to this. So it's very useful at different stages of your growth, right? But for me, that helped. And then, the, and then I began to grow past that concept and I needed to see that I needed to reframe it, right? So as right. you grow and begin to have new experiences, you have to integrate those experiences. Integrate. I into know, that. right? We Yay. love that word. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> so if, as I evolve, I start to say, well, I don't have to struggle to, prog to progress, do I? Right? right. And, then, and then I get to a point where I can say, well, maybe I can grow without so much internal and external conflict. How about that? You know, this is not about taking the work out of growth because there's always work to be done, um, but it's about taking the conflict out. And I think that's the integration or the evolution. That's even the honoring of, the, of our, our, our forebears. You know, they struggled so we wouldn't have to. So how do right. we integrate that into our state of being as well? Instead of struggle, we embrace the challenge. And instead of the challenge, then we embrace the opportunity. Holy cow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, That's awesome. I love that. That's yeah. right. And yeah. it changes the core feeling that we have about the experiences we meet in life, which is what you guys have mentioned too. It's, it's how we feel about it. That's important. And there's yeah. another saying, right? That I, I totally took this in, burn it down to build it back up. I love that. I'm like, yeah, I recreate myself. I'm going to burn it down and I'm going to yeah. build it back up. Or, or what comes up must come down, you know? <laughs> yeah. Struggle inherent in these belief systems, right? Because there's an act of destruction that's required before you can build. Yes. 
Yeah. So these are things that I realized were part of my core belief system that I wanted to evolve. They were useful and very helpful and very motivating at one point until they weren't. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. So I, I, can, have, I can relate. Yeah, right? Sure. Yeah. I don't have to destroy in order to build. Um, right. I, can, I can believe that when things are going well, uh, I don't have to believe that if something's going well, that, then ultimately the other shoe is going to drop and something is bad is going to happen, right? So my goal for myself, my family, my clients, community, is to take the fight out of the process of growth and recreation because I don't think it has to be traumatic. It's okay yeah. if it is. But right. I'm sure it doesn't have to be. Instead, you know, let's let go of what's in one hand to make room for something new. Totally different vibe. Let's yeah. know that good is followed by more good. Mm -hmm. Totally different vibe. So in, instead of clawing our way, you know, across yeah. that space from where we are to where we want to go, let's just get our float on. Let's float there. And that doesn't mean we don't work. It right. just means we don't, we don't have so much conflict. Yeah. And it may be more fun. Who knows? But, but I think that's important for people to realize right now, especially because I feel like the word resistance is used quite a bit and there is a lot of uh, people who, who kind of still feel like, I mean, and like you said, everybody's in their own stage of development. So if people are feeling like they got to struggle to get through to, to the next step or phase or, or side, then, you know, I totally respect that. Like, I'm not there anymore, like you, like similar to what you talked about, um, just because I don't really have the energy for that, or I feel like it's more of a, an energy waste at this point in my life uh, for that kind of thing. And I'd rather like float, like you said, and just let go of the resistance. <laughs> so um, I really, yeah, that was wonderful how you expressed that. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. And uh I don't know how you feel, Maya. I, you you may know this story better than I do, but I I'd like to know a little bit about Panya's story on how she uh, became a psychic medium, and I'm guessing part of it is the mystery aspect from what you said. <laughs> but I really really am curious about this because, um, you know, I it's interesting that you use uh, that in conjunction with your life coaching skills to help people, and so I'd like to know a little more about that and your journey. Thank you. You know, for me, um, that's a great question. For me, how did I come to mediumship? I, as I see it, it's about uh, making a deeper connection to your intuition, right? Your intuition and to source. And for me, that was just about um, shortening the amount of time it took me for, to get from point A to point B. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, uh, mm -hmm. we can, uh, it's like <laughs> knowledge versus wisdom, okay? So let's talk, so we talked about there's work involved. You know, getting your float on doesn't mean the absence of work. It just means rather than clawing through it, we're kind of flowing through it, right? We all hear about the flow, and, and that's real, that's real. We, we, you know, we tend to, and I am no stranger to this, want things fast and easy. We want instant gratification. That's what our culture teaches us. Um, but that's not really sustainable and it's not what I'm talking about. It's not what I've learned to do. And I've had to learn, kind of retrain myself because the work doesn't really end, right? When you're done, you're dead. We don't stop yeah, wanting, right? We don't stop wanting <laughs> yeah. to experience new things. And even when we pass into spirit, we don't, it doesn't end there, right? That's my belief. So, yeah. you know, if you want to wither away and die, Stop being interested in the world around you. I guarantee that your spirit, your brain, your body, your relationships, they're all with her, right? That's why, yes, I agree. That's why they say after three years um, of uh, quitting work and retiring, most people die. It's a serious. Uh, well, yeah, and you see that in our society. A lot of people just give up and they're like, okay, we're just going to sit around and watch TV. Not, not, that's not a judgment. It's just an observation. It's you that know. disconnection huh. of having that creativity, an outlet for it. And, you know, sitting yeah. on a beach is only good for a couple of um, minutes for some. And some people believe, oh, that's the goal. After I've worked so many years, I get this uh, time to do what I want. But mainly you forgot, like, how to create 
that what I want because you're so used to just doing the day in day out and or you got to this idea that if you were at the finish line somewhere you were just going to rest and you know in rest is death like it's not you know you can rest on the way but it's not like a resting of stopping and doing something you've got to keep the mind moving and you got to keep your body moving and it's all integrated and here we are again <laughs> you know it's like that's the point it's so true like i've you know i know this intuitively about my body and my brain but i i have a piece of furniture in my house that was sitting in our basement for probably some years and it 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 was a beautiful antique and I can't believe I let it sit in the basement and it was beginning to kind of decompose or um, become decrepit, let me say. And we brought it up, we refinished it and we started to use it again and it came back to life. Mm. Like it's, it's everywhere around us. When we use our brains, our bodies, when we nurture our relationships, when we learn and experience new things, we grow strong. Yeah. Even if we have been in a period of decline with you know, uh, reinvigoration with, with renewed use, we can grow strong again. So that's yeah. the beauty of the human spirit and the human body and the human brain. So there's, there's always work to be done, but how we approach the work, how we think and feel about it, that's everything, right? So for me coming to mediumship, it was really about um, um, learning how to hone in on um, what's really important and go towards that. Cause I'm, I'm very much an action oriented person. In other words, I'm kind of a doer and I've had to learn how to be <laughs> and I have learned how to be right. So I feel that the intuitive piece and connecting to source has helped me to convert all of that doing, which I consider kind of the acquisition of knowledge into wisdom. Hmm. And so what do I mean by that? Let me think about what I mean by that. So knowledge, knowledge and wisdom, knowledge and wisdom. They're both important. One is the precursor to the other, right? You can't get to one without the other. And like knowledge is the acquisition, getting stuff or bringing in stuff, bringing in information. And wisdom is the application. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I apply, apply the information in my life, I grow in wisdom. The wisdom comes through the application. And, you know, using that and following that intuitive voice helps you to um, apply in a way that grows your wisdom, that helps you to integrate and do so okay. with confidence. Because um, I don't think spirit and source is here to tell us what to do. They're just here to help us to um, integrate and convert that into wisdom so that we, I'm really trying to find the words to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing fine. I, I mean, so that we get off the hamster wheel, right? Yeah. So that we can integrate, so that we build confidence. Because, so, for me, okay, for example, for example, I've studied a lot of things. I've studied uh, kinesiology. I've studied uh, approaches to traditional Chinese medicine and meridian touch therapy and holistic nutrition. And in each of these different um, uh, paradigms, right? There, there's lots of different belief systems and lots of information and lots of knowledge. And for me, that has, because I like to experience new things and because I'm always putting something new in my backpack, for me, that has been overwhelming. And so I've constantly throughout my life had to find a way to keep myself out of overwhelm so that I can t continue to learn and continue to absorb new things, but not become overwhelmed with it and kind of stymie my own growth. Mm. So if I learn, uh, 50 different approaches to nutrition, for example, and there are certainly more than 50 different approaches, I can become attached to a number of different ones and then become overwhelmed by all of my choices. So for me, intuitive linking is about realizing that there are a myriad of choices. Uh, there's only one that you need to focus on in this one iteration of yourself in this moment, in this cycle of your life where you are. And it's helped me to trust that they're all beautiful and valid, but I only need to go down one path right now. And I need to integrate what I'm learning because everything has something very profound to offer me. So I can do millions of trainings, millions of courses as I've done, follow the next shiny thing, accumulate more and more, stay on that hamster wheel, or I can follow my intuition and say, this is the path I'm going to go down right now. Um, and 
I'm going to integrate what I learned. So to make this practical, right? So I think for me, what I've done is earlier on in my progression, I tried to get a lot of stuff and I'm not talking like buying bags, but information. I just love information. I love to travel. Love I think to learn Maya and I can relate to that, can't we? Yes. <laughs> There's no coincidence that we're all friends and we know each other. I know. You know? Right. <laughs> but what I wouldn't do, if you can relate to this too, is that I wouldn't, I would just, I was just in the knowledge phase. I was just accumulating and yeah. it was a hamster wheel. So what I didn't do was take the time to integrate. So now I acknowledge that I'm a lifelong learner. I love to learn, um, but I don't move on to the next thing until I've taken time to integrate. Now I'm about take your time, right? So I have this course. I'm going to sit with it. I'm going to learn it. And I'm not going to move on to the next course until I've integrated, meaning I have used and applied what I learned in the first course. That's with anything, right? Yeah. Because without doing that, we wind up leaving a lot of, time, money on the table, you know, it, it might take more time in the front, but in the long end, it saves you time. It saves you money. It saves you heartache and gives you peace of mind. So the integration to me is really where you allow wisdom to set in. And I use my intuition to know which direction to go. Cause you're not going to stop me from, <laughs> you know, learning new things. I'm, I'm not going to stop stretching myself, the traveling, meeting new people. I don't want to stop that. But I do want to get to a place where I can slow down, process, integrate, and convert that knowledge into wisdom, which then helps me to learn what I need to learn so that I can step confidently, courageously, powerfully into the next phase of learning. Mm. Does that make sense? It's beautiful. Absolutely. And I think yeah. you mentioned it's the, the process of being cultivating that patience and the presence, because if you are running like a hamster, you can't be a, a, a clear, you can't sit in a, in a stillness of space and watch the things that are going around you and really kind of uh, take in, you know, as the, we say, talk about like uh, smelling the roses, but it's not to sit there and, you know, get lost in it, but just to say, oh, I'm very aware of what is all going around me right now. Yeah. yeah. And that's the inspiration a big inspiration for our show because we had come into some similar challenges with just gathering tons of information and you know realizing also that it's a, it, it is a also a, a gathering of people's opinions too and so deciphering amongst that wh what you believe what is true for you and what's just someone else's respectful opinion, you know, um, but then taking the information that does resonate with you. And, and like you said, really taking the time, processing it, integrating it. And that's a big reason that we uh, started the show because we wanted to talk about that and we know talk about how to integrate all these aspects of health because Maya and I have, like you, a lot of different experiences with health. It's not just nutrition. It's not just fitness. It's we go into some other deeper aspects of it. So, yeah, that was that was uh, beautifully expressed. Thank you, Panya. Really appreciate that. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, well, there's a reason we've come together to you know play in the sandbox together. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know we're yeah. life learners. We're interested in growing and expanding ourselves and staying true to that. So. I, I, I have come to embrace this part of myself, which likes change. <laughs> I do too, I have to say. <laughs> and motivated, right? It's motivating. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is. And, it, 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 and to give the um, listeners a little background, um, you know, um, Allison and I and Panya all um, uh, went to a certain teacher that opened up a lot of information about the subtle body, how to work with the body in terms of either muscle testing or doing um, some meridian work or doing um, some opening of the intuition and following it and being confident that you're you're listening to yourself because like you said, it's the driver's seat of how you can funnel through all that excess that's around you and be okay I'm okay with where I'm at and I'm taking what I know is true to me at this moment and um, so the the development of each of us in all of our different ways comes from what we take from each of those classes so when we were in each course 
we got uh, when we worked with her name was Sue Mays and she's out of um, Ontario, um, California, of uh, California, Canada, hey. and or, <laughs> and um, so. Um, but we all took a, a little bit of her work and uh, and and you know and, and a little bit of whatever work she got from somebody else and and we all just make our own kind of you know brush of color stroke of what we like and how we like to integrate it and to our work so um uh, Pania, talk a little bit about like how you were helping people online um and like business coaching or you know one-on-one -on -one coaching and and give us a little of the in-depth process that you do with one of, you know, one of your clients Thank you for asking that. <laughs> so I want to I want to preface that by um, talking about uh, the difference between teaching and training, right? Mm. Like we're talking about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Um, not the difference, the interconnectedness of those things. So my my aunt was a master trainer for many years and she, she lives in Barbados. And when, when I had kids, I remember her telling me something. She said that she wanted me, and you know, I've been both a teacher and a trainer as well, but somehow she helped me to make this connection. She said, remember the difference between teaching and training. So when you're teaching someone, you're giving them information and that's very valuable. When you think about yourself as training someone, um, you're giving them the information and you're, you're acknowledging that, that there's an integration period and you're in fact helping them to integrate it. And I, I needed to remember this. She told me this when I had my kids. Um, and I needed to remember this with my kids that I'm not just teaching them, I'm training them, which means that there is a repeating that happens. You're spiraling back to information over and over and over. You're helping them with the application over and over and over and you're helping for the information to stick and for them to become that to integrate it right you're creating new neural pathways if you want to you know talk about how it works in the brain so knowing this the bottom line is that knowing this it helped me to uh be more patient with my kids when i had to say for the hundredth time go brush your teeth you know what i mean so <laughs> Uh, still have to say that <laughs> doesn't end does it Allison <laughs> no actually even in their teens <laughs> See, this was really profound for me she gave me the greatest gift because it reminded me of patience and it's the same thing when I think about myself when I think about working with clients is that you know we need to keep this in mind wherever we are in life when we're learning something new the training is a part of the integration the repeat repeat okay I'm gonna say it again that's okay we all fall down, doesn't matter how long it takes. Let's just keep coming back to it, keep coming back to it. So we're setting up new habits, we're creating new neural pathways, we're reprogramming ourselves. And that takes time, it takes commitment, it takes repetition, and it takes patience. Mm -hmm. So I understand the desire for the quick and easy. I have that too, right? And some things can be, you can speed some things up, but in terms of integration, you know, for me, I I'm not interested in people who are just looking for a quick fix, right? I'm interested yeah. in the people who are in it for the long game. This is about the long game. It's about sustainability. It's about recreating ourselves and our best image, right? And so I set up my offerings with that in mind. I, I do offer one-to-one -one sessions, like one-off sessions for people who just want to see what the service is like. And we can do it one-off just so you see, do you like my vibe? Does this work for you? But my core programs are three weeks and four months. Of course, three weeks because in 21 days, you know, you can set up a new habit. That's definitely valuable, right? But four months because, now I chose that because I think four months you can be, re, in, in four months you can be reborn. So think about the life cycle of the red blood cells, right? They live for about 120 days. And I know that you ladies, like me, we deal a lot with nutrition, right? So if I'm if I'm putting someone on a nutritional protocol or if I'm putting myself on a nutritional protocol, I want to try it for 120 days for four months because by the end of that cycle, I will literally be reborn mm. <laughs> and I will really be able to see some profound changes in my world. And that's for anything that we're working on, whether it's physical relationship work. I really encourage people to make the commitment to themselves of, uh, you know, four months is a good amount of time and you can see some really profound change from where you started to where you end. So I, I just wanted to say that 
for me, it's important. This piece of integration, I was so excited to talk about it because for me, I, I'm like, this is about the long game. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to right. sustain change and we're going into a training process. And training inherently taught is about time, commitment, repetition, and patience. And you also say follow through. A lot of follow through needs to come with the commitment and the time because a lot of people get distracted with this easy technology or this inf overload of information and I need to find the fast thing or I need to find the thing that's going to get me to that goal because I need to, you know, be a certain way or a certain time or whatever. It's the, yeah. the un unrealistic expectations we put because we get into this life of, uh, hey, it's so easy, uh, you know, one, two, three, you know, and you know, but there's also the follow through that we've kind of lost when we kind of get too caught up in trying to quicken the pace to get it done. And when we don't want to sit there and see, okay, is that working for us? Is that really changing our life for the better? Or are we just kind of masking that over for a temporary uh, relief? So you want to talk a little bit about that too? Oh, wow. Follow through. I mean, I, I think that so often, <laughs> We, and I, I do that, I have done this as well. We, we quit before we've had a chance to, to see the team, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I'm that's I the problem, I think. to, to self-destruction. I just, I, I've been doing that lately. Like, I can't tell you, but not about, it's just, it's just <laughs> one of those things where you, you, I think you get so excited about change and then you're like, then, you know, it's like that little thing comes up from behind you and goes, wait, <laughs> we're really, we really doing this? <laughs> right. Well, and I, I'll add to that, like, I, for a while I was, you know, I'd get bored with it or I'd be like, ah, oh, this, you know, and I think for me, what changed my mindset around it is changing the wording to practice. It's a practice. And when I started thinking about it like that, I was like, oh, kind of like athletics, you know, when I was a gymnast and I had to go to practice every day, you, you don't get your moves in one day or one month even, you know, it mm -hmm. takes time, it takes years. And so, and, you know, and um, I think Brendan, is it Brendan Bouchard or something that, that coach, he's a, he's like a business or habit changer. He just came up with a new book and he did all these research around these, uh, the, the highest performers, and they basically, he, what he came up with is that, you know, they're practicing these techniques every day. They're not just doing it like that. They're not, you know, it's not a quick fix. They're actually, they're working it into their day and they're doing it. So that's a great example, right? Yeah. And then I guess, so following through, like you're talking about, like, is really important to help people with for sure. Cause it's, it's teaching them, you know, how to integrate something, this new behavior into their life. And consistency. That's so true. Yeah, consistency, consistency, you know. Yeah. Just like we like just said, oh, with the with the working out thing. Like I train people in gym. Oh, let's just let's just work out for, you know, a week and let's see, you know, if that, that takes care of the issue, right? Like, no, like your body has to be moved every day. Yeah. Right. That's so true. it's similar, I guess, of think thinking of it that way instead of, you know, but I think what is confusing for people is the marketing aspect of what we live in. It's it's all about quick fix, especially in the health industry. Um, it's unfortunate. It really, you know, yeah. Let's talk about that. Like you, you know, talking about mastery, right? Like Gladwell's yeah. book, Outliers, and Gladwell's work was based on the work of Erickson, who who did this. You know, he was he was studying the habits of the most productive people, mm, the most yeah. productive broad history. And you know what people forget, they focus on, yeah, you need 10,000 hours. Yeah, work, 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 and 10,000 hours. Um, but you also need, well, I can't remember what it was, 12,500 hours of rest and 30,000 hours of sleep. Yeah, so right. when you factor all that, <laughs> yeah. years, yes, right? Right. Okay, <laughs> you don't do it all at once. You, you right. spread it out over time. Yeah. <laughs> and work aspect actually is the smallest part right yeah if yeah it's 10 Absolutely. hours of work and then 12,500 of rest which means that you're just you're focused on other things but the work because then and that gives your brain a rest and then sleep is 30,000 hours so thinking about you know these things are spread over time as you as you as you practice as you build mastery um it takes a commitment mm -hmm. and follow right 
Yeah. So, the best athletes yeah. uh, get trained that, but it's not, you know, it's not kind of conceived in, 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 in an idea that we're, you know, we're ourselves uh, developing in a way where, you know, we think by 40 or something that we're supposed to have it all together or at least know some kind of where we're going with what we're doing and and I think what happened with um, my own process of seeing like coming from an athlete coming into you know learning about holistic health and learning about all the layers of who I am and what I am mainly you get to a, a space of oh my gosh you know like y you have to have that um, time you know to develop all of it together you know and when we don't like think that you know we have enough time no wonder we get stressed out no wonder we want to put ourselves in these like constraints but it's like wait you're only this this stage you know you're you've got so much more to live for and and do and enjoy and and you know and and, and i think where you know health has gotten lost in in our society is like you know we, no one can see the longevity of their life you know in 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 the way that we probably don't want to know exactly who I mean, maybe some people do want to know when they're going to die but you you just don't know and so if you don't take that into account that longevity is important then you forget like there's too much being packed in in one little part of your life you know and it's like the more we get away from being able to like spread it out and enjoy it and see that you know I I really feel good in my body right now. I I really do. Oh, that's that's a real win for today, you know? Like instead of feeling like I have to be a certain size or have to be a certain look or, you know, it's gotten way out of control. Amen. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And it's not to say that we're not having fun and we're not it's it's a it's it's that balance that push and pull of we're stretching ourselves and we're stepping into the unknown, but we know that the, the pathway to that, the path to true empowerment is um, that we're committed to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? So I'm not necessarily, and, and this is just, this is my perspective. I like to do one thing at a time. And there's some people who maybe like to do multiple things at a time. I'm not knocking it, but I find that for me, it's most effective. If I'm taking this one piece, I'm working on it and I'm putting my full intention and attention on it. And then I'm integrating it, and it's through, by working on it and applying it that it converts from information to wisdom. And then I really, I take it into myself, and then I move to the next piece. And I take that with me when I go to the next piece, so that I've learned what I need to learn to be ready for what's to come. And we just, we forget that, right? So we have to keep having to go back and over and over, you know, I have to take the same class 10 times because I never integrated it the first time. <laughs> Right. Well, it sounds like yeah. a metaphor for digestion, right? Because as we get older, people have a lot of problems when they're stressed and their 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 gut goes havoc. You know, I can't digest the food I'm eating because I'm so stressed out. So it's a metaphor of like, oh yeah, you know how That's we kind of work in our own system, and you know if if we don't get that in an under like a layer of that understanding, no wonder our health is starting to suffer. You know, there's just a, you know a disconnect. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Panya, tell me a little bit about the procrastination aspect of how you help people, because I heard Maya mention that in the beginning, <laughs> and I was curious about that as well. That is great. So a part of um, a part of the work is helping people to understand, of course, that um, procrastination. It's a part of that first acknowledging the fear. Right? So procrastination is just a way for you to protect yourself. I, I believe, I believe. Now when you're, pro that's when you're procrastinating on something that you really truly want to do, right? So if you've been thinking about uh, starting a fitness plan, that's something that I have procrastinated. I am, I am the queen of procrastination on getting into the gym because I don't enjoy the gym. So rather than um, finding you know, using my, my, my natural gift, which is to find a solution, find another way, I allow that to stop me from getting into the gym. Like, well, we all have our kind of thing that we procrastinate right. on. So part of the program is acknowledging, getting to um, 
rather than focusing on why not, right? Because the brain, when we start something new, the brain immediately, we start to fire off all the reasons why we failed in the past. I've done that. You know, it hasn't worked for me in the past. I haven't enjoyed it in the past or blah, blah, blah. Or why other people haven't done it in the past. We focus um, on why it serves us to do it, right? Instead of why not? Well, wh how can this help you? What does it cost you not to do it? So a big part of moving past procrastination is realizing that you're just in that, um, that place of fear, which is very natural. Don't allow yourself to get caught in that place of fear. Just know fear is what? An indication that you need more information. And so then you go through an information gathering process. And for me, I prosper when I work through relationships, right? So I tend to then reach out to other people and begin to have conversations with people who are doing what I want to do, right? So I, I always look to my support system, which comes to me in the form of people. My husband is a lot more, um, uh, he likes to go through books and reading and things like that. And that's fine. However you get it, get it how you get it. But you're, you're looking at moving past that self-sabotage, which procrastination can be, sometimes. Sometimes it means you just need more information, but sometimes you're just stopping yourself from getting the information, right? You've experienced yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of thinking about why not, you're moving to your why. And the information gatherer helps you to, to accumulate a much more positive picture of well, why, why is this better for me? Is it better for me to move forward than to stay where I am? And, and so to me, I, I, I always, I chalk it up fear. You need more information. Go gather information. Take the time. Each time you get more information, more information, more information, and you get to the truth, the truth of what is stopping you. And then you get to the truth, the truth of what really propels you, what motivates you, and then you're off, right? I think that's great because I, I think for me, it uh, the procrastination comes when I feel overwhelmed um, <clears throat> or if I don't really want to do it, and I think that I need to do it, which doesn't happen as often as it used to. Um, because I kind of know what I do and don't want at this point, but before, you know, I would do things feel like I, cause I needed to do them, but, um, but yeah, I can totally relate to that. And I think that makes sense that you're saying like you find your, your inspiration, you break it down. What's, what's, what's blocking you. Cause if it is something you really want to do, then, um, then yeah, I think the getting past that fear that is the procrastination is important for sure. Yeah. And, and yeah. I use my intuition. I use my intuition and I teach other people how to use their intuition. So if I get an intuitive hit on something that it's for my highest and best good to do, I can feel it. There's something that I feel inside of me that lets me know this is something I need to do versus this is something that my culture tells me I should do or someone around right. me is telling me I should do. So the intuition has been so valuable for me to be able to discern what is coming from me what is my highest truth versus what is an extend, uh, external, uh, what is external pressure, I would call it, because it does feel yeah. like pressure, and that there, that's the conflict. So it helps me to just sift through the noise. That's what uh, mediumship, mediumship has taught me how to connect to my intuition, how to connect to source. And, and in doing that, it has helped me to sift through, be able to, you know, get rid of the superfluous noise so that I can move forward more confidently and more um, steadfastly, straight, yeah. like straight. Right, <laughs> yeah, laser, laser. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah you can kind of know what you really, place. what's really your, what, when it's coming from you as opposed to outside of yourself. And do you, do you recommend people start with meditation with that, get, tapping into or connecting to that intuition or uh, how do you guide people in that process, Anya? slow down. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It requires yeah. a slowing down. So you, you cannot be, uh, not cannot, but it is more difficult to hear, to listen when you're talking. So like, you know, it's the difference between prayer, you know, I'm, I may be praying all day, which is I'm sending out my uh, petitions to source. But if you don't at some point stop, from in meditation and just silence all the noise, then you never hear your answers, mm. right? And so, yeah, first step is, is yeah. slow down and remember that you have to listen. And, and meditation is a great vehicle for that. Some people will sit in silence. Some people will 
find that when through exercise, you know, it, it, there's no prescription for how it comes, but really the process is a process of slowing down so that you can listen because we're constantly talking to God. We can say God, universe, source. We are. We're constantly sending messages out. We're not always listening to the messages that are coming back to us. And so you uh, become an uh, inter uh, uh, intermediary between like helping clients when they're when they're in an overwhelm, you kind of step in as that vessel and allow yourself to be um, an a, a, a informer of what you kind of receive on their information by their for their behalf. And in that way, you can help them get more laser when they're having a harder time finding their own their own inner voice. Is that correct? Oh, thank you for clarifying that. Absolutely, Maya. For, for example, I think, you know, we all, I definitely am afraid at times if I'm doing something big or, you know, whatever the reason is. And, and, and I can tell if I'm not able to unjumble the mess in my mind, <laughs> then mm -hmm. I go to my healers and my helpers because you know, these are people that I trust um, who can help me to, to declutter and get back on that straight. So yes, that's what I help for people. You know, my job is not to tell people what to do. My job is to give them a sense of the trends, right? And the opportunities in front of them and help them to make their best decisions. And I connect to their higher guidance. I connect to um, that kind of clear voice on their behalf with their permission. So it's okay to be, it's okay to be afraid. I also help them to refocus their energy away, away from the reasons why not, and focus on why. Why are you driven to make this change for you? What do you stand to gain? What do your loved ones, loved ones stand to gain? Does it cost you anything not to move forward so that they can start to um, unpack them that for themselves? And that almost always brings them to clarity as well. That's good. And we need more people that do this kind of uh, for people as we get even more busier and more in, introduced to easier life that is supposed to be so um, easy <laughs> with so much technology, yeah. right? Well, yeah, coming <laughs> down to like what you're focusing on basically, right? Yeah. If we're focusing on negativity, if we're focusing on what's wrong with this, criticizing ourselves, etc., then I think that's, you know, what you're going to get most likely but I you know I, I think like what you're doing with people is wonderful because you're helping them stay focused on what they're wanting in life and how they want to how they want to create their life which is very powerful yes yeah I, I think when I first started I was more in you know I was more focused on having the answers you know yeah I can relate I, I was very much that way too yeah Right. Yeah. And I think Maya, you could agree as oh, well, yeah. right? <laughs> you thought you had talks. to have the answers to help somebody else, and it's not. Absolutely. It's, That's so stressful, isn't it? it? I mean, you're it's never going like, to do that. Yeah. Oh, it's a totally hard way to do it. It's, yeah. That's right. It's more you're of helping. A, yeah, go ahead, Pony. Go ahead. You're, you're helping people in the long run. I think at first when people get started, you may need to be able to give them yes, no, you Absolutely. know, that – but yeah. as they progress, you're helping them to see themselves as creative beings, as co-creative beings. And they come to understand that the process of session is a co-creative process, mm -hmm. you know, and they are in charge and they have everything within them to really guide themselves to the, the you know, a life that they never dreamed was possible. You know, this or something better. We always talk about, look, let it be this, but you know, it's not going to be exactly how you think it's going to be. And you need to allow yourself to say this. Yes, I'm clear. I want this or something better. So allow yeah. yourself to be surprised. Allow it yourself be better. to be in mystery, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what I love better. about it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, is there anything else that you would like to um, talk about before we end the show? We're coming up in the hour and just want to make sure we get everything that you uh have to offer to the the audience and then allow a, um, a little time to tell them where you're um, where we where you can reach you oh thank you Maya well you know it's been such an honor to be here with you ladies again I follow your work and I love the work that you're doing and I'm honored thank to you. be a part of this co-creative 
beautifulness. Awesome. Um, <laughs> And you know, I again, I I, I do one to one. I have an online course. Um, I can be reached at www.kanyawalker.com. And I encourage anyone who uh, is considering it to, you know, I offer free complimentary sessions to start. I shouldn't call it a session; it's a discovery call, so that we can kind of um, begin to connect and build relationships because it's so important to feel comfortable with the person that you're working with. And and I'm all about that. So. We do have, you know, if, if you're interested, you can contact me through my website and we can have a free touch base to see if this feels right to you and, and then, to see how I can help you. And then you also have done some Facebook things. You've had some, um, uh, I'm not sure if they're webinars, but I think they're just sessions, uh, working with people. And um, you want to tell them how to reach you on Facebook so that we kind of let them know what your new uh, sessions and, or, and what you're your new things are coming down the pipeline for you? Yes, please. I'm on Facebook under Panya Walker, under my name. <laughs> <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> yeah, that's easy, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's the best way to reach me. I have a page okay. on Panya Walker, a business page. Um, I have a YouTube channel, but Facebook is good. I think a lot of us are on Facebook. I really love Facebook. Yeah, good. Myself. Cool. We'll put a link uh, on the on the video as well. Thank yeah. you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you, Panya. It was so great talking with you. I'm glad we finally were able to connect and uh, and have you on the show. Me too. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Yeah. Thank you. We